Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where we talk about knitting and today we're talking precisely about sweater knitting. I love sweaters. Sweaters is like where you're gonna find me in my comfort zone, what I love doing the most. So that's what we're gonna talk about aujourd'hui. <laughs> my French is showing. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we're gonna talk about construction of sweaters when we're knitting sweaters we have multiple options and I want you to know what your main options are before choosing a sweater obviously we won't be able to talk about all the sweater constructions that exist because every time I open my social media accounts there are people coming up with new ideas that are all amazing. I want to try them all. There's so many ways to make sweaters that are very original and different. But today we're going to talk about the main constructions, the ones that you're going to find in every knitting book or in most knitting patterns. We're going to talk about pros, cons, why you might like it or dislike it, and we're going to try and do it quickly. I have my big old stack of sweaters here to show you examples and I hope it gives you a little bit of an idea of where to start searching when you want to create a sweater for yourself. The first thing that people like to look at when they are going to knit a sweater is whether they're going to knit the sweater in the round or flat and seam it. Pros and cons of those two things. First of all, a lot of people have learned to knit on straight needles. They've learned to knit back and forth. They have not learned to knit in the round. And maybe knitting in the round is something that they don't want to tackle right now. That's not something that they want to learn how to do. So knitting flat, it is. They will knit pieces of the sweater and seam them to create the shape. And most of the styles that I'm going to show you today, you can absolutely knit flat and seam. The major, major pro for that technique is that seams create structure. When you seam pieces together, it creates a place to anchor your, uh, your work and those seams will make sure that your sweater won't kind of start warping or it will um, have this, you know, at the shoulders, it might be a heavy sweater and the seam will keep the, sh the, the shoulder seams in place. Seams are generally good. But if you don't want to seam something, a lot of people prefer doing the method in the round because one, they prefer knitting to purling. So when you're knitting in the round, most patterns will have more knit stitches on the front of your item. And so when you're in the round, you're going to have to do a lot more knit stitches than purl stitches. And then you can try on as you go because your sweater is already together. So it's easier to try on as you go when you knit in on circular needles. You don't have to purl and you don't have to seam anything. One thing that I want to mention about the seaming is there are definitely some patterns that will have a bonus when you're knitting flat. Something like this, for example, this is a heavily cabled pattern and I knit it in pieces and then seamed it. Why? Because every other row is working in pattern and every other row is a cable row. So obviously it's easy when you're going back and forth because the cable row is always the front of your work and the knit and pattern is always the back of your work. So it's very easy to know where you're at and not get lost in, am I on the cable row? Am I not on the cable row? Okay, we've talked about flat versus circular. Number two, are you going to knit your sweater top down or bottom up? That kind of goes hand in hand with the flat versus circular, but not completely. Most circular patterns are started from the top down. I'm saying most, I'm not saying all. I know there's plenty of patterns that will have you knit from the bottom up circularly, but there's also a big um, tendency to write patterns with certain type of uh, shoulder constructions from the top down. Again, from the top down makes it easier for you to try as you go and also kind of get the first part of your sweater that is the most important for the fit 
first. And then once you've done that part and you know that that part fits, it's easier afterwards. You're done with the part that is kind of tricky. When you're knitting something bottom up, you can try the part that's underneath your armpits easily, but you can't know that the um, shaping up here will be the length that you need for the body to fit at the right place. Maybe I'm not explaining myself properly. If I try on underneath my armpits and I'm like, okay, this is where my sweater whoop, goes, so then I know exactly where my uh, ribbing will hit, but then when I start knitting the yoke here, maybe that will be much deeper than I expect, and then all of a sudden my ribbing is down to uh, my thighs. So it's a little bit more tricky to try on as you go with a bottom-up sweater. When you're knitting flat in pieces, it's even more difficult because obviously when you're knitting pieces, most of the time you're going to be knitting bottom up and you're knitting in pieces. So unless you're willing to like put pins and everything to try on pieces as you go, you're not going to really be able to know the exact fit of what you're knitting unless you're doing your swatch correctly, you're doing math, you're measuring everything as you go. So it's a little bit more of a risk to take when you haven't been knitting a lot of sweaters. For a first time sweater knitter, I would personally recommend doing a sweater in the round, top down, and then I'll talk about constructions, obviously. But in the round top down is the best way for you to be able to try on as you go and kind of calm down the stress of maybe getting something that is not to your liking. Now, let's talk about actual construction. The simplest, simplest sweaters are what we call drop shoulders. Drop shoulders are something like this, where you'll have a rectangle here, a rectangle in the back, and then you'll be knitting here pieces that are, you know, either in the round or flat to attach to these rectangles. So as you can see, my armhole here has no shaping. I just knitted, 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 and then this was knitted either in the round or seamed up to the armhole, and then you seam the shoulders together if you're doing bottom up. And then when it's time to do the sleeve, you can either pick up the sleeve around the armhole and knit the sleeve in the round top down, or you can knit the sleeve like you did the two panels, which is flat up and then sew it onto your drop shoulder. This construction is the easiest because it doesn't have any shaping. It is what it's, a drop shoulder means that the shoulder will drop whether here, 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 it depends on the amount of ease you want to be putting in your sweater. This is another example of a drop shoulder. So the shoulders are all the way down, you know, here for me on this sweater. And it is, this one is done um, a little, it, it's got a little bit more complexity to it, but generally drop shoulder, Super simple. If you're doing a top down, in the round, drop shoulder, you're most likely gonna be asked to go back and forth on the back panel first, then pick up the stitches up here on the shoulders, do the front panel like this. Maybe there's gonna be some shaping here for the neckline and then here, and then here. And then once you get to the point where you've passed your underarm, it's going to, going to ask you to join all of that together, the back panel and the front panel, knit in the round, and then pick up stitches for the sleeves, and then knit, knit the two tubes that go down. If you're going bottom up, you're going to be doing a big tube going up until you reach the armholes, and then you're going to be knitting back and forth the back, the front, sew together just the top here, and then pick up stitches around and probably knit the sleeves top down. Um, one con about drop shoulders is it's not very fitted. It is a very loose, drapey type of uh, construction generally, and it won't, you know, be shaped 
to your shoulder. So if you don't uh, like something that is, you know, low here on your shoulders and something that is loose fitting in the body, that might not be for you. So then we're going to talk about raglan sweaters. Raglan sweaters are these ones where you have a clear line going from the neck to the underarm here in four different points. So two in the front, two in the back, where we're going to be increasing or decreasing on either side of that faux seam. So it's basically a little bit like a, it's a, raglans were made for baseball actually, in order to have uh, baseball players have the full range of motion in their shoulders. So it's a very uh, sporty, casual look. This is one type of raglan. Where is my other raglan? Oh, this is also a raglan. So raglan don't have to be done only in uh, stock in its stitch. This is a raglan as well. And this raglan was knit flat. Like I said before, this one was knit flat and this one was knit in the round. This one was knit top down and this one was knit bottom up. So really you can go all the ways <laughs> with a raglan. I feel personally like it's, uh, one of my favorite to teach people how to knit sweaters because it's quite simple when it comes to the construction. You can see clearly where you have to uh, do some either uh, increases when you're going from the top down or decreases when you're going from the bottom up. And um, it generally fits most people pretty well. Uh, every raglan has its own calculation on the speed at the rate and the speed at which uh, designers like to add stitches so you have to be careful in looking at the pattern and seeing if you like the armhole depth uh, if you like where the raglan is connecting to some are less wide some are wider where the line starts uh, it's all personal preference also just as a example if you're going to be knitting a top-down sweater whether it's a raglan or circular yoke that I'm going to be talking about right after, you're going to be knitting the entirety of this part in one big piece up until the armholes. You're going to be knitting in the round in one big piece. You're going to be putting the sleeves on hold, then you're going to be knitting the body, and then you're going to be knitting the sleeves. If you're going bottom up, but in the round, you're going to be doing the body first, and then they're going to ask you to do the arms, and then you're going to join everything together and start doing the decreases. What I like about doing bottom-up sweaters that I, I actually rarely choose bottom-up sweaters, not because I don't like bottom-up sweaters, just because that just so happens that most of the patterns that I prefer are top-down. But what I love about doing a bottom-up sweater is you can start with the sleeves, and also when you're knitting the sleeves, they are not attached to a body and having a sleeve by itself to like knit on while you're going about your activities is much less cumbersome than having a full sweater that you have to knit sleeves on. So for people that hate being what we called on sleeve island, which is a very lonely and sad place to be on sleeve island, it takes forever and you're just bored and you want to be done with your sweater, doing bottom up might be your solution because you knit your sleeves first you just knit up a tube that goes super fast and then you have your body to knit and when you join you're at the fun part where you get to do all the construction. Just a little tip for you there. Okay, so those were my raglans. <laughs> um, next one is the circular yoke. The circular yoke is generally what is used for beautiful color work, uh, sweaters like this one, but it can also absolutely be used for very simple sweaters like this one. So you can see that in my, um, you can see very clearly why it's called a circular yoke just at, by looking at the stripe pattern on this. This is a hand spun yarn, so it's not, I'm not using multiple different yarns, it's just the yarn does the patterning. And you can tell that, you know, it creates this circle. So when you're knitting a circular yoke, you're basically placing increases or decreases um, at a steady rate along the yoke 
of your sweater and that calculation that the pattern designer makes for you gives you the option of like making those beautiful color work I, as well because they will be placing augmentations, increases or decreases within the color work chart so you can't even see where all the increasing or decreasing is happening. It's very well hidden within the pattern. This one was knit bottom up. So I started with the sleeves, knit the sleeves, then the body all the way up to here, connected everything together and then knit this beautiful yoke that just kept on going smaller and smaller and smaller up until the neckline. So it's very motivating to do it that way. But again, I had to make sure that my gauge when it comes to my um, gauge, my row gauge was correct because you wouldn't want to start knitting this beautiful yoke and then finish the yoke and notice that it is much too shallow for your armpit or much too, you know, long. Um, yeah. So circular, circular yoke are also very simple. Uh, one thing I would say for circular yoke though is I don't think that the fit well everyone the same way that most um, raglan will fit most people. I didn't say that properly. I don't think that circular yoke fits everyone as well as raglans do. Let's say. Um, but then again, it's a question of personal preference. So if you love a circular yoke on you, absolutely simple to do. Circular yoke are one construction that I've, mm, I don't think I've ever seen done knit flat only because it's a circle. So it's, it's meant to be a circle. So it's knit circularly, right? <laughs> you get it. And the last construction I want to talk about is one that I haven't done much of. And it's one that most people kind of see in their head when they say that they're scared to knit a sweater and that they're scared to knit a sweater in pieces as well. Uh, it's the, what we call the set in sleeve. The set in sleeve is what most garments that are uh, machine made, store bought will be. It's this very, beautiful line here in the shoulder that really fits your shoulder super well. And then this seam is perfectly placed. A set in sleeve uh, will have a seam to attach the sleeve to what we call the sleeve cap. So like there's going to be absolutely some shaping happening up here where the sleeve has to be kind of connected to the sleeve that's in my husband's sweater and then there's going to be some you know increases or decreases going down it's much more um fitted so it has to have much more construction happening but it's also super pretty when it's well done generally set in sleeves will be uh knit in pieces because you want to get this beautiful seam along the shoulder so it will be knit in pieces. Maybe the actual I've seen I've I've seen some knit top down that had a um, pickup around the armhole and then short rows to be able to knit a sleeve cap. That's a super nice way. Like I said, people have reinvented the wheel on those classic constructions time and time again. And it's beautiful to see people trying to figure out constructions that will look similar or get the same effect as a set in sleeve without the complexity of having to sew in the sleeve with the sleeve cap exactly on the right spot. So it looks perfect because that's one of the issues with set in sleeves is one um it has to be you know for a designer you have to do more calculations to make sure that the set in sleeve will be well placed but also when it's time to make the sleeve make the body when it's time to seam it together you have to be very precise in the way you set the sleeve into the sleeve socket I guess that's how it's called, right? Uh, whereas when you're sewing a drop shoulder or sewing a raglan, it's much more obvious because the rate is the same here all along the sleeve, the raglan 
seam here, the sleeve, the sleeve and the body just kind of pushed together like a, a super simple puzzle piece, whereas this one is a little bit more of a this type of puzzle piece, a little bit more complex. What I'm wearing right now is none of those constructions. It's called a contiguous uh, method of doing a saddle shoulder. So as you can tell from here, there is this band of knit stitches that go along the top of my shoulder and then the, the, the sleeve cap is created and then there's this section that's much more like a raglan section. So it kind of wants to mimic again a set in sleeve but without having to work a in piece construction. So that sweater is knit you know back and forth for a little bit of the way to raise the back of the sweater and then once you hit about this area then you start knitting in the round. So there is no seaming to do but you still get a very clean shoulder look with that faux seam going down near the shoulder. I really, really love this method. This sweater is the Primaire Pullover uh, by Camille Decoteau. It's coming out in January, so go check it out uh, on Ravelry. And I'll put the link down below when, I, uh, when the pattern's actually released. Here you go, that was my less than 20 minute quick review of the sweater constructions that are commonly used. I hope you learned something. If you did, click the subscribe button, leave me a comment and tell me, have you knitted sweaters? Are there some constructions that you prefer or that you avoid? If you like this video, I suggest you go check out this one where I talk about the most common mistakes people make while knitting sweaters.